Hello, and welcome to In the Court of the Wenton King. King. Yes, indeed, and hello. Today we're doing Kid A, which is the third in the trilogy we're doing of Radiohead's Journey. I don't like it as much as OK Computer. That's, that's my conclusion. Having listened to it for about two months, I heard it when it came out, and then didn't really hear it until about two months ago when I bought the CD for the first time. And it's really good. Not as good as OK Computer. It's interesting hearing it again, and it's not anything like as extreme as I remember it being. I remember it being quite far out stuff, and it isn't really. It's just good. My opinion may be tainted by, by getting this little gem here the same week so we sh I should I should stress that yeah I mean I think Radiohead probably lost well, I don't know if they lose our fans for whatever reason are quite loyal to Radiohead but I think a lot of people kind of listen to Kid A and Amnesia and Hail to the Thief and sort of pine for the OK Computer days yeah or even Ben's days yeah something. And, and secretly wish that they went back. What seems to have happened is they've taken you know a, a more experimental almost Kind of, yeah. Um, approach to their music and more rhythmic than melodic. Yeah. And sort of relying, on, well, not non standard, but I think that they are trying to find interesting ways of making a different type of sound. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean they've realised they're not players, they're, they're, they're composers, they're not players, and they're, they're, it's like they're more self aware about what, what's good about what they do, and it's the texture of the sound is what they're good at, the sound of his voice, you know. So that's what they've played up to on, on this. But like we said, they very quickly became so disillusioned with, with the guitar music they were making. They had to move on. They were listening to things like Aphex Twin and stuff like this. I know Tom York was involved with some dance music as well. He was, he was DJing and stuff. At the time when dance music was interesting and stuff was changing, you know, unlike now when it isn't. But yeah, so instead of riffs and songs, you've got sometimes drum loops, sometimes live drum loops like Tomorrow Never Knows type stuff. And what you end up with is something that really does sound like from the 70s. It sounds like Kingdom Come or Can and bands like that. They were, I, mean, I know they were actually listening to Can at the time. And I think Tommy York was actually reading about the Beatles at this time and the fact that they were experimenting. So in a way, ironically, it's, it's a retro album in that they've gone back, they've recognised what we know to be true, that the, you know, the 70s was better. And before the corporations, the businessman with his suit and tie ruined everything. I mean, some of it, I mean, a bit of early Gilmore Floyd, Omagumma sound effects stuff kind of stuff is in there as well. I would suggest that there's nothing on here as good as live versions of Careful With The Axe Eugene, but pretty much everything on there is better than Omagumma. That's not a controversial thing you're saying there, I don't think, Kev. No, other than Floyd purists. I think what, what's, what's relevant is, it, in a way, the sound complements the pretensions of those that thought it was cool to like Radiohead, because it's actually quite easy to listen to. It's not that far out at all, really. There's just lots of reverb and stuff on some cool sounding stuff, and it's all sort of ambient and passive in some ways. It's nice to have an album with some ambience in it that doesn't have what's his face involved in it somewhere along the way. Yeah. Right, you know. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's quite cool. unique, really. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting that, that you know they, they were still cool. And it was still cool to like Radiohead, even though they'd moved along the journey and ended up somewhere totally different to where they were. I don't think that's intent. They're not. Be they're not being cynical about it at all. I don't think it's not intentional. In fact, I think they find it kind of traumatic that everybody in the world thinks they're the coolest thing ever, and they're just trying to change and move away and just be musicians, you know. And it isn't working. The fashionistas still think it's cool to like Radiohead. What I find cool about this album is that you know I think every band in the world they're trying to carve out a little space which is theirs, mm -hmm. and normally they're trying to carve out a bit of space in a, a heavily populated form of music so every, you know you, you can quite quickly pick up how which, which other bands a certain band is related to there's no one else that sounds like this no it's certainly influenced it, by lots of stuff yeah but not, not very really. unique you can't pick up future days by can and say this sounds like today because it doesn't not be. no. there's influences in there it, it, it's got to the point now where you can recognize a radiohead track sounds like radio yeah instantly it's like, like Zeppelin-esque and things like that, it's in Flo and Floydian. But we sh I mean, we should say, although, you know, I prefer OK Computer, that's now confirmed. If they just did OK Computer again, it would have been very boring. We wouldn't have even reviewed it if they'd just done OK Computer again. They probably would have done the Benz and OK Computer. But here we have the end of the journey. As with all those bands, they, they have a journey and they go up and up and up, and if it's Tales from Topographic Oceans, the top of the mountain isn't there and they fall off. But if it's the Lamb, yes, Apex, and then they go right down again. With Radiohead, they just sort of carried on doing Kid A type music. Well, it's interesting that Amnesiac was essentially a bunch of stuff that didn't make it onto Kid A, which suggests quite a lot of material uh, went into Kid A, which really does suggest that they were looking for something. Yeah, I think there was a lot of farting yeah. around recording sounds and all that stuff, but they, you know, they made a really good album out of it, so that's cool. Mm. Track 
one. Track one, and straight away, organ. They've, they've moved away from guitar sound. And the, the, fundamentally, it's guitar, no, no more. It is now organ sounds, keyboard sounds, that kind of stuff. And it's got the perfect combination of ambient and catchy, which is cool. I like it. I like the bit that goes... I bet they didn't sit there doing that, and they should have done. We should record an a cappella version of this track. <laughs> track two. Okay. The thing about this track, this is, I think, might be my least favourite song on the album. Straight away you realise what they're doing. It's just lots of reverb to make everything sound spacey. You know, that's 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 the gist of what they're doing. They make something, start off with something quite simple, but then just reverb and it goes on and on. And, you know. and it's got this effect on the voice, this sort of distortion thing. I, I don't like it. Interesting title track. Probably controversially, I would, I would assume. I find the voice annoying. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Track three. What's the, it called? The national anthem. The national anthem. Really cool riff with cool effects on top, um, and then the brass comes in. Oh yes. I love the way they've used brass because it isn't like they just put loads of brass all over the whole album. There's just little bits of it creeping in. Yeah, it does sound quite um, nasty though. It is sort of like okay, gong. Just put yes. a bit of gong on yes. there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know uh, Motorhead Sherwood on? Um, on King Kong from the Uncle Meter album. He couldn't play. Someone just gave him a trumpet and said, well, you blow here and you press these. So they just recorded him going. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the way to make music. Yeah. Track four, how to disappear completely. This is, uh, we have strumming. We have guitar strumming, but ambient strumming. And it's cool, I like that. I actually, this, I, I think an awesome track. This is the track that I thought did really belong on this album because it is very melancholy. And you can sing along with it. Whereas most of these on here, maybe the exception of a uh, motion picture soundtrack, they're not really meant for that because they don't make a lot of sense. Putting the words together is quite a challenge. Uh, not on this one though, quite like it. It's my favourite track on the album. I mean, in terms of listening to depressing music in January, I don't think you do that. I think if you're unhappy, you don't listen to unhappy music. I don't anyway. So it's not really the best time to listen to Radiohead. You listen to Radiohead when you're very happy in the summer, not in January blues. Five. Tree fingers. This is actually processed guitar. It sounds like keyboard washes. Basically, a frippism. It's kind of like soundscapes. It's that kind of thing. Really good, actually. I think it's one of my favourite things on the album, actually. Yeah, it is good. It might be thought of as, as a, a bridging track by some people, but I, I really like that. Yeah. Track six, optimistic. Much more vanilla. I think what the, they didn't release a single, obviously, because singles are, are for noobs. But they sent a selection of tracks to radio stations to play. And th I think this was the one the radio stations wanted to play, because it's, it's just more like what they expected. Flashy guitar, which is a bit dull, uh, but it's a great melody, so what, what are you going to do? I agree. Track seven. In Limbo. Uh, I really like this, because it's kind of, it really sounds chaotic. You've got the arpeggios on the guitar, you've got some keyboard stuff going on in the background, you've got a drum loop live, and some vocals on top, and it's all, you can't quite figure out why it doesn't sound like it fits together, because it does, technically, but I really like that. Yeah, it's really good. It's confusing. It's confusing, which is a hallmark of experimental music. Good stuff. Eight. Idiotech. This is the famous one, isn't it? This is the, bit, the big one. I love the title, Idiotech. I, I expected it, when I, well, when I first heard the album years ago and saw the track list, I expected a sort of Radiohead version of Dancing Fool or um, Disco Boy or, or something like that where you know, it's making fun of people at discos. But it isn't. It's m much heavier than that. Apparently Johnny Greenwood made 50 minutes of nonsense on the tape <laughs> and uh, Tommy York picked out like two seconds of awesome and made it into a song. Um, and it is fantastic. The famous melody, you know, the Ice Age is coming. Ice Age coming, no, Ice Age coming. That's what that is. Who's in a bunker? That's what it says at the start. So I think there's, a, there's some sort of anti-war... Politicking going on. Eco, possibly, as well. But the Who's in a Bunker thing reminded me of um, the bravery of being out of range, which is Roger Waters' title. Similar sort of thing, I think. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a bit it's... impenetrable, though. Like, like with a lot of the lyrics, it's obviously open to interpretation. Which some people like and others don't. I'm kind of in the middle on it of it, really. For me, this style of lyrics, that you're going to do that, it's got to be really surreal. And I don't think they're quite surreal enough. The problem is when it sounds like it should mean something and it doesn't. That's the problem, isn't it? But I think, I certainly think with this song, is that it has several meanings which he's, he's aware of when he's writing them. So they aren't just random yeah. words. It's not like John Anderson. He just thought, well, that sounds good, let's do that. I'll be around about. The words will make you out and out. Or um, a really famous song by Led Zeppelin. Yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember the name of it. Some unknown thing. Okay. There's a bustle in my head, right? This interestingly, this this actually uses samples 
of some 70s experimental electronic music as well. Oh, that's cool. Uh, their names were Paul Lansky and Arthur Krieger. How did they come across those? Yeah, well, well but this, this music comp came about from them delving into 70s music, really. Okay, track nine. Track nine. Morning Bell. Morning Bell. Yeah, nice live drum loop, etc. It's okay. And the final track? Yes. Motion Pitch Soundtrack. Motion Pitch Soundtrack. Supposedly, allegedly, this was around the time of Pablo Honey they had this. Maybe it's just about how it's presented in such a different way. It sounds like my organ. And now I've done that joke. You might have noticed in our earlier videos that this, this, this bookcase wasn't here. Actually, there was actually an, an organ here. I don't mean a keyboard. There was an actual organ with air pumped through it. Brrr, kids think it sounds like that, that thing I used to have. It's kind of noisy and crass, but really good. It's one of those things you can't really explain why. It's just compelling. And, it, and it's nice, nice. It has an ending to it, rounding off the album well. Yeah. They did a brilliant job of choosing songs that will fit together in an album rather than just trying to put all their songs on the album like Chili Peppers did or whatever. It works fantastically well. Some excellent preening. So yeah, what you ended up with was uh, an album that is looking at the 70s scene, but it does sound thoroughly modern. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the clever thing about it. Yeah. They're, they're, they're able to modernise, move away from the, the boring way rock, rock music had gone and, it, and go yeah. back and then... It's almost like they're sort of bypassing the 80s and the 90s, yeah. saying this is what could have happened. Yeah. Even to the point where they're not releasing a single. I think that's quite significant. And yet, they've never moved on from that point. Just like all these bands, they, they reached their, where they were aiming for. That was what they were aiming for. Once they get there, that, that's it. They're not on the road anymore. They just make more albums. And, you know, I think some of the late ones, my opinion varies. That They're good. I mean, In Rainbows, some of it just sounds like they're just farting around in the studio. They sound like demos. But some of it's good. I mean, you know, Amnesiac's got um, Pyramid Song, the famous song. That's a good song. Good for you as well. Mm. Four eggs. Four eggs. Yep. Some of these four eggs. Yeah, four yeah. eggs. I didn't. I didn't see that coming. I, I expected to having go, to go back to this. I think it was the best one, but it isn't. Okay. Okay. Computer is the is the moment. So yeah, that's it with Radiohead. Join us next week for a review of this. And just topping up your invoice. Mm -hmm. See you next week. I think that went rather well.